I'm not going to die, she said. Not till I've seen it. Seen what? Her smile widened. Everything. <laughs> channel my name is Leslie and today I'd like to review A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I rated this a 4 out of 5 and let's get started with what I thought of it. I don't actually like the cover very much I don't find it interesting at all but what I do appreciate is the inside of this edition. I don't know if they're all like this but I really enjoy being able to you know Imagine but also have it in front of me what the characters look like. This is our main character Kel This is Lila and these are the villains in the story and I thought that was really cool and he's really cute <laughs> I thought that the plot was really intriguing and super creative and what a cool concept to have four parallel worlds that have nothing in common except for the fact that they share one city that straddles the same river on the same island, the same country, and that each city is called London. So the plot is something like this. In the beginning, there was magic everywhere on each world, and it flowed freely, and then just like a river, it kind of pooled in some areas and dried up in others. So three centuries ago, the four worlds were entwined together, and the people who were able to wield magic were able to move between the worlds with relative ease. But at some point, the magic in one of these worlds kind of took over the population and people began to change and so the other world saw this as kind of a disease that was spreading and so they decided to cast them out and lock the doors between all the worlds so now nobody is able to move freely in between other worlds this is how the worlds are described there is gray london who's forgotten all about magic there is no more magic in their world the people don't remember anything about it then there is Red London that actually is flowing with magic and people who aren't able to wield it are viewed as weak. Then there is White London where magic is rapidly disappearing and where people are feeling their world kind of dying and they're hungry for magic. They are ravenous for magic. And then there is Black London that's been cast out. No one's been to that world. No one knows what's even happening on that world or how the people are doing. The main character in this story is named Kel and he's one of the two only magicians who's able to travel between the worlds and helps the worlds communicate between each other. But he's got a bad and addicting habit of smuggling various objects between the worlds and if he were to get caught that is actually viewed as treason by the crown. And one day as he is leaving White London to return home to Red London, he's kind of forced into a deal where he takes a stone back with him and then figures out that it's actually a very powerful stone that originated from Black London and it's filled with magic and it very well could destroy his world but also take over his body because in this story magic is not an abstract thing. Magic is a living creature, a living thing that if you can't control it, it will control you. So it takes over your body. So that's exactly what happened to the population in Black London. So the main character's goal is to go through each of the Londons to make his way to Black London to get rid of the stone. But there are twists and turns and betrayal and surprisingly, no romance, which I really appreciated. So our two main characters are Kel, but there's also this character named Lila. And I think that Kel could very well become a new fictional crush because he is funny and witty and a smart ass and has the best comebacks ever. And I really love the dialogue whenever Kel is involved. And Lila consistently, repeatedly, saves his life and I love the dynamic between the two because it's not on a romance level. We get glimpses of what's eating at them, the issues that each of them are struggling through and we know, 
I mean, we don't know, but I'm sure they're gonna blow up in their faces in the second novel. There's only two kisses in the entire novel, and they're not even on a romantic level, it's more of a good luck thing. So there's no shameful instant love, which I can really appreciate, but I think, and don't quote me on this because I obviously don't know, but I think in the next novel there may be a love triangle, which is fine because they've spent an entire novel getting to know each other, so I can't be upset at that. The story was on the slower side. It wasn't action-packed, but it was very entertaining. Although certain scenes completely made up for the lack of events, like for example the fight scenes between the two magicians, they were really well done. I feel like this novel set up a whole lot of things for the next novel by leaving a lot of things open, but the world building was really fascinating and reading about the differences between the world and the different Londons was really creative. It didn't end on a cliffhanger and it seemed like the problem was pretty much resolved at the end, so I was really surprised. And if I hadn't known that this was a trilogy, I don't think I would have known to look for the sequel. So it is a little strange because I don't know what the second one could be about, but I'm told that it's even better than the first one and that it has a lot more action. So I'm definitely gonna pick it up. And what I really liked was that the writing was really good. It was very smooth and the chapters were very short. So it made for a very fast read. And there were some really good quotes in this book that were very powerful. And apart from the one that I've already quoted in my intro, here's the second one I like best. Be glad for what you have and who you have because you may want for things, but you need for nothing. And I like this a lot because let's be realistic. We all like to bitch and moan about our lives, but this is true, most of us want for things, but we need nothing. So I know it's bad, but I love the villains in the story. Like, I love villains. I love them so much more than actual heroes, and it's, I know it's a problem, but I really like them. They were, they were so villain and good at what they were doing that, yeah. This series has a lot of potential. I'm not in love with it yet, but I'm close. And for that reason, but also for the fact that it was on the slower side for most of the book is why I rated it a 4 out of 5 and I can't wait to read the second one so that's really good. <laughs> and now I can see what the hype is all about and I'm not one to pick up books that are so overly hyped and I've had this series on my bookshelf for quite a while but I'm glad that I finally give it a shot and now I can actually see what the hype is about. So that is it for today's review of A Darker Shade of Magic. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!